Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So we're gonna get into this story time about has firing a client ever backfired on you or have you ever fired a client? So let's go ahead and get into it. For those that have fired clients before, of course I had a client this weekend and I'm literally starting to dread seeing her going forward anymore. So this past weekend, she made me in half an hour late for my next person because she was nitpicking at her nails every single time. I was literally trying not to get mad, but oh my God, I literally almost lost it. So I'm only considering firing her as a client because when I was filing her nails, she literally had the audacity to pull the nail file out of my hand and start filing her nails. Mind you, this kind of took me aback and it kind of made me a little bit more in shock. And I'm like, um, what are you doing? And she was just like, I'm trying to show you how I want my nails filed. I'm like, but I am the nail tech and I've been doing your nails for over three years. So what are you talking about? Every time you have always been coming in and you have liked the shape of your nails. So what is going on right now? She was just like, nothing. I just want to show you how I want my nails filed. I was just like, if you want to do your own nails, be my guest. You can go ahead and do that by all means necessary. Now, mind you, I do a few of her employees' nails as well. So I didn't want to be questioned about why it would have sucked to lose them. But I don't know how much more to take from my loyal client. I do, I do things a certain way and I would like to stick to what I do and what I know how to do. And it drives me nuts when people are trying to tell me how to do it. Like I have been doing this for years and I have perfected my craft. So for you to sit up here and question the way I am shaping your nails just is very disrespectful to me because I've been doing your nails for over three years. So me and her just was going, you know, we was having like a conversation and things like that. And honestly, working from home, I just think it's just personally just best to keep it, everything professional at all times. But when I say this lady was going belligerent over her nails, I just never seen her act like this. I don't know what was going on with her. Like I was literally just confused. But anyway, so once we got done with her nails, she was just like, um, I'm not paying for these. I was like, excuse me? She was like, yeah, I don't like them, so I'm not paying for them. Oh, yes, you are. Yes, you are paying for them. And you know how you're going to pay for them? Is At the time when I was taking clients working from home, I definitely think it's imperative that you have a website to where they have to enter a debit card. And that way you can put a minimum hold charge on their car for the services. So if they choose to not go with the services or choose to, you know, choose not to show up, you still need to get paid for your time. Now, I'm not telling you to charge fraud. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is if you have if you know you're doing nails full time and you know that your money is based off of who comes to you, it's definitely important that you have some type of way to secure your income. So anyway. So I did a hold on her char on her car and she already knows this prior to her booking the appointment. So once she got her nails done and she stated that she wasn't paying me, I went ahead and charged her car the $75 fee because you're not going to sit up here and make me feel like I'm doing a bad job when I've been doing your nails for three years. Logically, that doesn't make any sense to me. So I did charge her car. I informed her, yes, I am still going to charge your car your $75. You could do as you will with that information. So she ended up just letting the car charge be fully processed because she knew she was in the wrong anyway. Like, how are you going to do me like that? I, you supposed to, you supposed to be my lawyer client. How, how dare you? But so she ended up messaging me um, and was just like, she's not coming back. And I was like, you know what? That's actually great because... I was actually going to inbox you or text you in, in general and let you know that I'm no longer able to see you because of the way you treated me at our appointment. And she was just like, wait, why do you want to fire me as a client? I'm like, look at what you're doing to me. You're disrespecting me. You're talking about me on your social media channels and making it seem like I'm just a bad person when I have been nothing but loyal and nice to you. And on top of that, I have been giving you free press on nail sets from time to time when you want to go on vacation with your friends. So how dare you sit up here and treat me like any other less of a person? And it just doesn't, it doesn't make me feel good that I have to fire you because we have built up such a great relationship. But I am not tolerating no disrespect from a client. So with that, she just stopped texting me. And I was like, okay. So she started back posting more on her social medias about like how she would never go to me anymore, how I'm unprofessional, how she did not like me anyway. But she just kept going, going to me because she 
you know, she would get like loyal clients. They would get like a per- certain percentage off on their of their nails. Like she been going to me for three years, so you know, her hundred dollar nail set will probably be about seventy five dollars. You know, just because she's been with me for so long, and she was just like she's been using me this entire time. I'm like, oh my god, like I'm over here thinking I'm, you know, building good bonds and things like that. But at the end of the day, I'm getting taken advantage of by someone. I felt was a really nice person, you know? So I was kind of hurt in between, but at the end of the day, this is a business, so you cannot mix business with pleasure. So when she was going around talking about me like that on social media, normally as an entrepreneur, I've always seen other nail techs do to try to address someone else based on their opinions. I did not care to do that because you know why? I'm not in the wrong. You are. So at the end of the day, if you tell the people, your employees not to come to me, some of them end up still coming to me in general because they like my service. They like how long their nails last. Mind you, my nails lasted four to five weeks. So they were totally okay with still coming to me. And yes, yeah, she felt the way about it. But I mean, how could you feel away when you are being rude to me? You taking nails files out of my hand? Are you insane, lady? Yes, that's what it's giving. So anyway, I was just disappointed from that. And I had to fire her. And I was very hurt about it because we built a very good relationship. But anyway... Have you guys ever dealt with that? I want to do that mini story time so I can go ahead and talk about the 3D flower. I'm actually going to break the 3D flower down in details. So right now I was trying to use a bare white acrylic, but that was not working. I needed the Mia Secret. So you already know my best friend, girl. I had to pull her out. So let's go ahead and talk about this flower. So... When you're doing the flower, I'm doing an ombre color flower, which is a two-tone color. As you can see, I grabbed the white, then I grabbed the brown, and I put a little bit of brown on top. You want to let that set for a while, and I did leave this in full time. Only thing I did not leave in full time is when I was letting the powder set. You want to use the tip of your brush to go ahead and mold that in and give you that pointed look. So what you see me doing here is I'm pushing it in again because I did not like the way that the petal was looking on the outside. So I just decided to push the petal out with the body of the brush again and gently tip, use the tip of the brush to make that flower point. And when you're doing flowers, petals, it's very hard to do when you're first learning. So use the tip of the brush and you're literally using the tip of the brush like you see this dot at the top boom tip boom <laughs> letting that sit for a little while and then placing it a couple centimeters be above or well, this is on the side so you want to place it a little centimeters on the side away from the diamond because you don't want it to go inside of the diamond you don't want it to flood the diamond and then using the tip of the brush that's when you're going to start flushing out the petal and then using the body of the brush to move it side to side and you want to gently do this so like doing the petals you're not being very hard on the petals you're like barely touching the petal and picking up small acrylic beads sometimes you will have to just keep restarting because sometimes the bead will be too big sometimes it'll be too small or sometimes it would just fall off of the brush because it's so tiny so you see how i am using the body of my brush to create that round shape and this is how you get the two-tone colors. I love two-tone flowers because I feel like it may it adds more depth into the nail set that you're doing. And it makes also brings out the dimension of the flowers. So doing two-tone petals is definitely one of my favorites. Definitely try your best when you are learning it. So look at what I'm doing. Using the tip of the brush, boom. And then using the body of the brush to push it out. But this um, tutorial is not that long. And I just want to tell all of my new subscribers and my fellow subscribers that always watch my channel. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Let me know what you think about the story time. This happened in real life, just so y'all know. But um, <laughs> let me know what you guys think about the story time. And I hope you guys continue on your journey on for your nails. Remember, you can do whatever you want to do. Your mind is the only thing that will limit you. So... You know, put, in your, put some affirmations in your head to be like, I'm capable of being a fine nail artist. I am capable of, you know, being a great entrepreneur. I am capable of receiving clients. 
I deserve this. I am abundant. This is my life. And I choose my own life. I choose my own path. I walk in my own purpose for my highest good. You know, speak those things because sometimes being an entrepreneur, it can be very discouraging when you are putting a lot of work in and at the time that you feel like you should see results, you're not. But I'm telling you, the results is coming, okay? You just have to be persistent. You have to be consistent. And you have to be patient because everything happens in divine timing. Like, look at my YouTube channel. When I started a couple years ago, I was very inconsistent because I was not in a good space. But this is the most I've been consistent this year. And I am almost at 1,000 subscribers. And I'm very grateful that I've been pushing myself and being disciplined and staying more so disciplined. I'm not going to say motivated. I mean, I'm motivated. But being disciplined is what really will distinguish you from being successful. Being motivated, that can tempor- that's like temporary. Being disciplined, that's what you do daily. Like you teach yourself how to become a disciplined person. But anyway, I am done talking. So anyway, guys, thank everyone so much for tuning into the channel. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And remember, you hold the power within you to create whatever reality that you truly desire within your own heart. Everyone, enjoy your day. Have a nice one. Stay safe out here. And stay tuned for the next tutorial. Bye now, besties.